What are you hiding, Peter? I'm just kidding, I don't care. Bye. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's B. Avery here again for my opinion slash review for Spider-Man Homecoming. If you look around, you can see I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Probably the biggest. Spider-Man is my most favorite character in all of Marvel Comics. So Marvel Studios and Sony finally teamed up in Spider-Man's first solo movie. So how did it turn out? Let's find out. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So guys, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man. He's my most favorite character in all of Marvel Comics. DC, it would be Batman. If someone put a gun on my head and said, which one is my favorite out of the two, I would probably pick Spider-Man. And that's not really from all the comics that came out, you know, many decades ago. It's from when I grew up in the early 90s with the animated cartoon that debuted, which I have on DVD here. Right here, I have Daredevil vs. Spider-Man. Uh, also have Spider-Man vs. Venom. Spider-Man vs. Doc Ock. And Spider-Man vs. Venom. And this is where I fell in love with Spider-Man. I just think he's a really cool character. And so, you know, I love Tobey Maguire back when Sony had him in 2002 and 2004 and 2000. I think that last one came out in seven. You know, of course, part three was a huge, huge disappointment. And I own that as well on Blu-ray, the Spider-Man trilogy uh, right here. Spider-Man's one, two and three. Part two is, uh, you know, also the best. And I also own the uh, Mark Webb versions, the Amazing Spider-Man, which was OK. It was it was it was OK. And I also have this shitstorm here, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And you're probably like, well, Brandon, if you just called it a crap storm, why do you have a copy of it? Well, two reasons. One is because I'm just a real big geek and I like to still listen to the commentary and all the special features behind the scenes just to see how, you know, certain productions were made. I also wanted to know what in the world was going on with the directors and the writers for a number of decisions they made here. But also, my friends actually got it for me as a gag gift because they know how much I hated that movie. But I do love Spider-Man uh, up until, you know, besides this movie, Spider-Man 2 with Dr. Octopus is my favorite. Then Spider-Man 1 where he's fighting Green Goblin. Then The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, I forgot Spider-Man 3 is in there. Uh, Spider-Man 2. Then Spider-Man 1. The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man 3, and then The Amazing Spider-Man 2, that order. And of course, by the end of this video, I will tell you where Spider-Man Homecoming ranks. I will tell you who I like out of uh, Spider-Man Peter Parker, out of all the characters, whether that's uh, Tobin Maguire, Andrew Garfield, or Tom Holland. And um, I will also, uh, of course, tell you about the movie. Now, going into this film, I had really high expectations, but at the same time, I tried to keep them low because I remember when this deal between Marvel and Sony launched a couple of years ago, I was I was excited but nervous at the same time because, of course, we didn't know everything that we know now at the time, but I was like, I don't know, man. I don't want Sony to have creative control over this property because if they mess it up, they can ruin the whole MCU. So I was just like, you know, really, really nervous, but... Up until this film was coming out, I was, you know, pretty excited. It looked very excited. I was excited to see Iron Man in the trailers and Happy Hogan, uh, played by John Favreau, the guy that directed uh, Iron Man 1 and 2. I, I was really excited about that. You know, thought that they was doing a great job of seating everything together. But then that one trailer came out where it actually showed Iron Man saving the people on the ferry. I thought that that was a mistake because when Spider-Man is up here like this with the webs trying to hold the the uh the ship together i'm the favorite together i'm just saying to myself like wow you know he is really up a creek how is spider-man gonna get out of this situation but then they ruined it in the trailer by you know letting you know that iron man saves the day so i was you know i was excited nervous a little hesitant because i thought the trailers kind of ruined everything um but i i am glad to say that they really didn't ruin much for you i mean that would have been a nice surprise to see in the movie but it really didn't make that big a deal. Now, this film is directed by John Watts, who also directed Cop Car that came out in 2015. And everywhere I turn, you know, people always have something nice to say about the guy. Now, about this movie here, of course, this is tying in with the rest of the MCU because, of course, Spider-Man tied in with Civil War. 
we have Iron Man in this one. So, of course, this is going to be tying in with the rest of the MCU. And I will say with this being the, I believe, the 16th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now, uh, in the middle of Phase 3, this Spider-Man Homecoming movie feels as separate as the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. This one actually feels like a solo film. You know, all the other films kind of feel like they're using the same cinematographer, which is fine. That's not a complaint. But this one really does feel like it stands on its own. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not a good thing either. It's good because the movie does feel like it's standing by itself. But at the same time, there are a number of cameos in this movie from the MCU. So it doesn't fit too well. It's like you see all these familiar characters like Iron Man, but... Just something about him during certain times when he's in the Iron Man suit. To be honest with you, it does feel out of place. Also, with the inclusion of Happy Hogan, like I said, played by John Favreau, there is one scene in particular towards the end to where they just kind of went overboard with trying to relate it to the MCU and the rest of the Avengers, which I found completely unnecessary. Now, that is not a complaint throughout the whole film because you see in the trailers there is one a uh, line where Spider-Man, to, uh, Tom Holland is trying to stop the men from robbing the bank in the very, or towards the very beginning, and they have the Avengers mask on, and that is an Avengers reference, an MCU reference, and that right there is perfectly fine. It's cohesive. It's not forced in, but I, I, and I think this is in the trailers, but like towards you know the end of the film, he's like, yeah, I got this shipment here of all these new Avenger products or whatever. He didn't actually say Avengers products in the movie. He said that in the trailer. But he takes the line of the lines of dialogue a little bit further. And I'm just like, really, with that equipment being there, was it really necessary for you to say that and scream it over the phone? I mean, I'm assuming the person on the phone would already know what they're receiving anyway. If this is just top secret, you know, pieces of equipment. But that's just, you know, one gripe of many that I'm about to get to in a moment. But one thing that is great about this movie is how grounded Spider-Man is. I mean, he is possibly one of the most relatable characters in the MCU. And that's not because everyone has spider powers and can climb on walls and do web swinging through, you know, city skyscrapers. No, 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 no. I mean, and like I said, you know, not like Captain America, not everyone fought in World War II and had a super soldier serum. Not even one is a genius with billions of dollars that can build a suit to fly around. Not everyone was hit with a gamma bomb and can tra uh, turn into a raging monster. But like Spider-Man, like Peter Parker, everyone has gone to high school. Everyone has experienced that. Like 99.5% of people have went to high school. And that is one of the best things of this movie here. It's probably one year. It probably actually is the best thing is seeing P Peter Parker, seeing Spider-Man in high school, trying to balance his high school life and his Spider-Man life. I mean, you can relate to everything. You can relate to all the awkwardness, you know, staring at people, male, female, that you're attracted to, you know, teachers getting on your nerve, getting away with this, pranks, little childish things that people in high school do, high school prom, dances, homecoming, just like this movie, you know, dress code, trying to impress this person, this person. We have all experienced that. So when we see Peter Parker, Tom Holland, Spider-Man interacting in high school, you know, it, it's, it's just like a nice breath of fresh air. And it just, you know, it's really grounded and it just kind of, you know, takes you away from Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain America. Not like those things are bad. Those are great. And I love those things. But it just, you know, really feels like you're at home, you know, no pun intended with homecoming. But it just really does feel like you're home and you're able to relate to Peter Parker. As far as Peter Parker is concerned and Spider-Man, a lot of people at the end of Civil War were like, man, this is the best Peter Parker, the best Spider-Man ever. Oh, my God. Ah, I love it. And, you know, I didn't want to come to those conclusions because in Civil War, he had only two scenes. But as far as him in Homecoming, he's a great Spider-Man. He's a great Peter Parker. Um, I don't want to say he's the best, but he is great. Uh, I, I will say that I, I honestly, and this may upset a lot of people, but hey, you know, if this is upset you, get over it. This is my review. This is my opinion. But I honestly think that Tobey Maguire made a better Peter Parker for me. Now, I do love the fact that uh, Peter Parker here is in high school, where that's where his origin is from. He's in high school. This is where it should be. Uh, I believe he's a sophomore. Kevin Feige even said that the next film is going to be in his junior year, and that's perfectly fine for the third trilogy, his senior. That's perfectly fine. But as a character, 
you know, I like a nerdy Peter Parker. And Tom Holland did not seem that nerdy to me in this movie. He was smart and he was able to put things together, but you really didn't get a true account of that because a lot of it was, you know, going on through montages. But Tobey Maguire for me in the Raimi Spider-Man films was more of a nerdy, geeky Peter Parker. And I, I really did like that. As far as the Spider-Man is concerned, um, I like him as Spider-Man more in Civil War than I do in Cap not Captain America, Spider-Man Homecoming. Because that is probably this is probably one of my biggest complaints of the whole film, guys. And while Spider-Man is you know a prominent character in this movie, it's his movie. This does not feel like Spider-Man to me. This does not feel like the Spider-Man that I know. And it really kind of bugs me. I'm not saying that the movie sucks. The movie does not suck. You know, the movie is great and I had a, a, a ton of fun with it. You know, but this is my favorite character. So I'm, I'm going to this thing like I want this to be like a 9.5, 10 out of 10. And then that's a long shot. You can't expect every movie to come out that way. That's just not realistic. But I'm not going to lie. My expectations were high. And I wanted to see Spider-Man doing a lot of Spider-Man things. And he really just did not seem like Spider-Man to me in this movie. One reason that, that being is the one, there was no spider There was no Spidey sense. And that is, you know, one of the prominent things about, you know, Spider-Man and his powers and abilities. He has a spider sense. You know, of course, he's web swinging and things like that. But it's not like the Raimi films. It's not even like the Mark Webb films. Because in this, you briefly see Spider-Man swinging around. But majority of it is at nighttime. And I mean, OK, I really want to see Spider-Man swinging around in the daytime, not just, uh, you know, I want to see him in the daytime, not just at nighttime. And there are shots of him flying around in the daytime. And you do see that in the trailers, but a lot of it is YouTube clips and videos or whatever. It's not just kind of like him in a first person uh, shooter view or, you know, just the camera off to the side, just seeing Spider-Man swing around. That's just, I mean, that's just cool to look at. I remember back when I was a gamer back in high school, I had a PS2 and I got one of those Spider-Man games. And that's one of those Spider-Man games is... You know, of course, you can go out and do the missions and all that good stuff. But another thing you could do in the game is you could just swing around the city, flipping in the air, doing this, doing that. And, you know, that was just fun. Just being able to be Spider-Man yourself. And I really did not feel that in this movie. Another thing that kind of gripes me out about the Spider-Man is his suit. Tony Stark put too much in this suit. I mean, this dude can do everything. He got parachutes. He got heaters. He got Zoom glasses, you know, he has his own uh, visual display and just all just all this extra, extra stuff. Now, from a story point, from a storytelling point of view, that makes sense because, say for instance, Spider-Man does not, did not have all this stuff in his suit. Then somebody would be putting in their review, oh, this is plot hole. If, if they really want to beat the bad guys, why don't they just use... You know, uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark's uh, technology to enhance his suit. Okay, that's fine. And I was thinking about that. And I had those reservations in the trailer. Like, okay, I'm not really feeling this now with him able to, you know, he has a robo spider on his chest and all this stuff. I'm not really feeling that now. But maybe they'll have a good reason for it in the film and come to a great conclusion. With, as far as the conclusion of the suit, I love what they did at the very end of this movie. It made me, you know, very happy. It's going to make you cheer because, you know, if you're a comic book fan, and do any of these is Iron Spider? No, none of these is the Iron Spider. I don't have a decal for that. But the Iron Spider is basically like what Tony Stark uh, makes uh, uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and the comics it's basically like an Iron Man suit, but for Spider-Man, like literally, it's not anything cloth or rubbery. It's like a metal suit, you know, that can fly around with blasters. It can shoot blasters and shoot webs or whatever. And don't want, I don't want to spoil anything. I, I'm trying to watch what I say because I almost actually did spoil something. But I was really concerned with that. Like, are they going to have that in this movie? They don't. They shouldn't have that until like Spider-Man 6 or something. Because me personally, I'm kind of jumping all over, around the place, but I'm going to come back in a second. Me personally, I think that they should have at least 10, uh, keyword on least, at least 10 solo Spider-Man movies. Three of them in high school. This one was his sophomore year, one in sophomore, junior, and senior year. You can have three to four more in his college, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. You know, so what is that, uh, uh, six or seven? 
then you can have five to six more of Spider-Man as a, a young adult or an adult or whatever. And that's perfectly fine. Spider-Man is one of the most popular characters in all of Marvel. He has all the villains. He has anti-heroes and anti-villains and, you know, all of that good stuff. You can do this easily. And I forgot the point. Uh, oh, the point I was trying to make is, yeah, don't have the Iron Spider in the Spider-Man 1. You know, push that f further out. You know, I mean, we can even have a, vil a, a Venom trilogy. And I'll touch on that in Amy Pascal uh, comments, you know, here in a second. But it was just too much with the suit. I was just really disappointed. I'm like, man... The one thing that made Spider-Man Spider-Man is because that you liked him is he was grounded with, you know, being a high school, but the guy was smart. He was a genius. He's one of the smartest people in the whole MCU. He's not Reed Richards level or Tony Stark's level or he's maybe coming up on that, but or, or uh, Black Panther's level of intellect. But he's smart. And one thing about his character is he's always tinkering with things, just trying to figure it out for himself. And that's just kind of what makes you love his character. I mean, in Civil War, Captain America Civil War, Tony Stark called him a dumpster diver. So when you take that character element away from him and replace it with the suit that's basically just like an Iron Man suit, I mean, it's like, this isn't the Spider-Man I know. I, I want Spider-Man to be figuring these things out. I mean, there was a sequence to where Spider-Man was locked up in a factory and he was just kind of getting to know the suit. And I, I mean... Get to know your abilities. Don't get to know your suit. That's just really annoying. And they actually had multiple scenes like that. So I just really wasn't a fan of that, to be honest with you. Um, they really just didn't give me the Spider-Man that I wanted because there was a lack of action of him swinging around through uh, the city. Um, uh, the action that did take place was majority at nighttime. There was no Spidey sense. And it was just too many gadgets to get most in the suits, and that honestly did turn me off. As far as the rest of the characters in the film, Marissa Tomei uh, played, uh, what is her name? Aunt May, she did a great job, very attractive aunt. I, know, I, I do like that. I'm not really, you know, an extremist like, oh, Aunt May should have looked like a grandmother. I, I, I really don't care. I mean, Aunt May is a cool character. We respect her, but, you know, you know, as long as they didn't make her like she was 25 or something, you know, uh, this is perfectly fine. Um, another character, of course, that I want to talk about is the villain played by uh, Michael Keaton. I cannot believe I, I forgot his name. He is the Vulture. And his character was great. I did love him. He was very threatening. This is possibly one of the best villains that we had since Loki. And don't get excited because that's not saying much at all. Because for the most part, all the Marvel villains in the MCU have sucked um, other than Loki. Uh, really, Ronan the Accuser was trash. Uh, uh, Malekith, the uh, elf, was trash. Um, you know, um, uh, 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 the Mandarin was super duper trash. You know, Loki was cool. Um, you know, he had somewhat of a reason to be mad, but at the same time, you know, he was just kind of whining, like, you know, Odin, why don't you love me? You know, I, I, I just really wasn't feeling that. The Vulture is great in this movie, but I do not like how they revealed his character. I mean, at the very beginning of the movie, there's no buildup at all. It's kind of like, bam, right there. Here's the Vulture. It's like, okay, um, you know, where did you get your suit from? You know, I mean, and we understand where we get it. So he gets it from the Tinkerer. And back eight years ago, the Battle of New York, when the Shatari invasion was coming and there was a, a cloud or damage and debris everywhere. Uh, Michael Keaton's character, Adrian Toomes. And for me, loving comic books, I just did not know his comic book name, so I want I wanted to look that up. And Adrian and Adrian Toomes, um, he was great as a character, but I'm just sitting here still kind of wondering, like, okay, why, you know, like his suit was cool, but I'm just kind of like, what made you want to be a vulture? Like, why is it mimicking a vulture? I mean, if you wanted a flight suit, okay, have the tinkerer make you a flight suit, okay, with a helmet or whatever. But his wings are specifically tailored like a vulture or a bird. And he has talons on the bottom of his feet. You know, I don't know if that's possibly be because he wants to grab equipment. And, that, you know, that probably is the reason why. Because when I was watching the movie, I was like, why? Like, why is he tailored after a bird? Does he have some infatuation with birds and vultures? I mean, I don't mind the character. Just, you know, make it, you know, realistic to, uh, you know, the movie. Like, for example... When The Dark Knight came out a number of years ago, Christopher Nolan in an interview was like, you know, how Batman has that like sheath on his arm and, uh, you know, he had the, like the little daggers or whatever. He was like, okay, that's cool, but what is the point of it? You know, and in Batman Begins, it was used as a blocking mechanism. And in The Dark Knight, was it, yeah, The Dark Knight, it was used to like shoot out uh, 
not batarangs, but uh, discharge uh, projectiles or whatever. You know, his suit had a purpose. And during the movie, I really didn't feel like the vulture's suit had a purpose and why he was tailoring after a vulture. Um, but, you know, he they didn't even recognize him by the vulture name. That's not, you know, that big of a deal. But, you know, it is something I noticed. And I was like, why do you have these eagle claw talons? But at the same time, now that I'm thinking about it, as I'm actually telling you this review, it does make a little bit more sense. You know, so, you know, I guess I can give it a pass there. The Flash, played by Tony DeVolari, uh, he was okay. I didn't really buy him as Flash. Uh, I kind of know Flash is kind of a muscular character, just a little bit, you know, that actually looks threatening. This guy just came across as an insecure bully and just wasn't a fan of him. And Ned was cool. His friend had actually found out that he was Spider-Man. He did kind of get annoying during a few scenes, and that's just something else that I just was not a fan of. Is like, I like Spider-Man to, you know, like nobody to know his identity. If somewhere in the Spider-Man comics or the lore or whatever that people started finding out his identity, you know, okay, I guess I have to accept that. But the Spider-Man that I know, the Spider-Man that I grew up with, you know, people wasn't knowing his identity. And that just kind of made his struggle, you know, that much harder, you know, when he's trying to fight bad guys and stuff. You know, the main plot of the film is just, you know, Spider-Man is just trying to prove himself and how strong he is. You know, he already did that in Civil War. But, you know, he has an itch and just wants to do more. And there is nothing wrong with that. If I was in his shoes, if I was 15 years old, I would be doing the exact same thing. I mean, I get bitten by a spider. I got all these powers. The Avengers call me like, hey, bro, we need you. Let's fly around the world. I would be super duper excited. Like, you know, super crunk. You know, like, seriously, just stoked. Blown out of my mind with excitement. You know, I get it. But I don't want the whole film to focus on that too much with him trying to prove himself and just, you know, going out of his way, getting to you know, a mishap after the mishap or whatever, trying to chase after the vulture and stop him from, you know, doing what he's doing. Of course, stay after the credits. When you see this movie, there is a mid credit scene. Uh, there was a character that seems somewhat important, but I really don't know who the guy is. Um, and also there is a credit scene at the very end. I don't want to say it's the best, but it's up there. And it is very funny. Uh, I, I will say that I, I, I do like that. Um, but guys, overall, you know, I really did enjoy the film. Is it a home run knock at a park that I wanted? No, it's not. Does this movie suck? No, it doesn't suck at all. Is this movie good? It's better than good. I, I would say it's great, but, you know, I am a little let down. I am a little bit disappointed. There really, I mean, you know, there's just really nothing. I, I, I really cannot pick out a scene in this whole entire movie and be like, that was an amazing scene. Did you see Spider-Man when he swung over here and just shot the web like this and da-da-da and swung under and kicked the guy and then flipped over here? I can't say that about one scene out of this whole movie. I mean, I just can't. I mean, for a Spider-Man film, it really just did not have that much action. You know, this is really more of a character piece, a character drama with a lot of funny bits and Spider-Man running around trying to figure out who he is and learn new abilities. But, you know, the Spider-Man here where you're swinging around you know, doing all types of crazy stuff that that's just not this movie, but that does not mean that it's bad. Now, as far as the uh, best from the worst, um, as far as the six Spider-Man films go, Spider-Man 2, where Dr. Octopus told me Maguire, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, to me, that is still the best Spider-Man movie of all time that blows all the rest of, well, yeah, it blows all the rest away. Coming in at number two, Man, I, uh, coming in at number two, I'm going to say Spider-Man Homecoming. I had to think about Spider-Man 1 because there were some things that upset me in Spider-Man 1. So while I was looking at the screen like, this does not make any sense. Uh, but there was no scenes like that in, um, actually there was one scene in Spider-Man Homecoming because they, they, they use the same device twice. One time it worked, one time it didn't work to where it's like, you know, what does Spider-Man do if there's no buildings to swing on? He has to run. And, you know, that can be funny. But there was another time in this movie where I felt that, like, why are you not swinging? You're driving around in a car. This looks stupid, you know. So um, so the uh, Spider-Man 2 with Dr. Octopus, that comes in number one. It's still the best. Spider-Man Homecoming comes in at number two. Uh, Spider-Man 1, Sp Sam Raimi with Tom McGuire, that comes in at number three. The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh... That comes in at number four. 
Spider-Man 3 with Venom, that comes in at number 5. And then The Amazing Spider-Man 2, that crap fest of a film, comes in at number 6. As far as the best from the worst uh, from the whole um, Spider-Man movies between Sony and Marvel. And the touch, since I did bring up Ven Venom, uh, a lot of guys, it was so funny over the past few days and, or a week or so, when Amy Cat Pascal dropped that knowledge talking about the Venom is in the MCU, Kevin Feige kind of looking at her like, uh, what the hell are you talking about? You better clear that up. You know, of course, you're not going to say nothing, have drama on camera. Then she came back, tried to clear up her statements. You know, uh, as far as all that's concerned, I really don't mind Sony making a Venom movie. Um, I even would not mind if the Venom movie was in the MCU. My problem with it is this is so far too early to be having a Venom movie. This is just stupid. This movie, Spider-Man Homecoming, hasn't even been released yet for you to make any type of judgment calls based off of box office. And you're already trying to make a Venom movie? Why? Venom is going to come. Venom needs to have like three movies alone. Like, you know, Black Spidey, uh, 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 Brock, uh, Venom, and then Carnage can come in part three or something. Have Venom in part Spider-Man part five or part six. We just haven't even released you trying to have a Venom movie that just... That's just a horrible idea, you know, and, you know, like, even if this is a separate universe, if this is a Spider-Man universe that they're creating where it's more Miles Morales, it's Spider-Man, hey, you know, I'm, I'm with that, you know what I'm saying? We can have, you know, uh, uh, the MCU can be like the 616 universe, and then, like, Sony can do, like, the uh, Ultimate Universe or something like that, but, you know, um, anyway... So, uh, if guys, if I wanted to rate Spider-Man Homecoming out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Yes, a 7.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Spider-Man Homecoming yet? Where did you Were you able to attend any of the early screenings? Do you want to see it? You know, have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, that's perfectly fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Speaking of Marvel, guys, I really love, uh, need your help. You know, I really want to go to that Black Panther red carpet premiere that comes out February of 2018 next year. You know, it's a, a, a love Marvel. I love comic books. I love Black Panther. I'm a black guy and that movie comes out in Black History Month. What? Are you serious? That would just be like the most epic dream come true for me if I can go on that red carpet. Even if I'm not on the red carpet. I just want to be on the sideline. Or I just want to be like, where they at though? You know what I'm saying? Like all the stars. Like seriously, I just want to be there. You know, in the air, breathing the same air as all these beautiful black actors and actresses as they're bringing beauty to the screen with the title of Black Panther. So help me out and get there by sharing this video 1,000 times. Is it a long shot? Yeah, but I'm going for it. And also, guys, since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide, whether it's now, later, in the future, or check out some of the stuff I put in the back. You can also go to my website, Book Market, check me out there, all the written reviews I have. And also, guys, look me up on social media. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for my most favorite popular comic book character of all time, Spider-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.